Hi everyone, my name is Kayla um, and today I will be teaching you how to make this monogrammed letter. Um, before I started this video, I traced this M. Um, this is graphite paper on the back. So that's what I did first. And um, today I'm working with the Colwood detailer. That's the machine, that's what it looks like. Um, so I'll get started here. I'm gonna start on temperature six, right here on the dial. And I'm using a writing tip for this. So that's what I'm gonna start doing. You just close up you here. As you do this, you can kind of tell if your temperature is up too high um, because it will burn faster than your hand can go. So if that happens, you just adjust your temperature down. Basically, as you're doing this, <clears throat> you can tell how long your hand is gonna go before you have to lift the burner up. It's all about time and speed with the temperature. If you um, don't keep up when keep your movement solid and smooth, um, you'll get burn dots on your work. And then you have to scrape them off. So I'm just going around and outlining the M right now, um, and I'm gonna do the same with these designs, but then I will show you how to shade at a lower temperature to get dimension. Um, so I'm just gonna work a little bit on these lines, and then we'll get started with shading, which I think is the more exciting part. And um, I'm burning on basswood for anybody that's wondering, um, this is the best, I prefer basswood and birch to burn on, um, but everyone has their preferences. I like basswood because it's soft and it's easy to sand um, to a smooth surface. You wanna make sure your surface is as smooth as possible before you start. I sanded with a medium grit sandpaper and um, then a fine grit sandpaper afterwards. And you can sort of see um, and tell whenever you uh, forget to sand certain parts of the wood, but you can always just go over it again. Like the trick is for getting straight lines, if you plant your palm and just move the rest of your hand, sorry, I'm a little shaky. Um, that's how you can really get straight lines and have control over your hand while you're going.
So for some of these lines, I'm going to do some stippling, which means you just kind of press the tip into the wood and it creates little burn dots. And it's just a cool little effect. Okay, so now I'm going to take my tip and press it in to do stipling or stippling, depends on how you pronounce it. Um, I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit to like six and a quarter. And then this is my favorite way to fill in letters. Um, there's a few ways you can do it. You can do lines, um, you can shade it, but I like this look and um, I think it's the quickest and most consistent pattern. So that's just my opinion. And really you can do this with any tip. Sorry about that. I didn't realize you couldn't see here. Okay. Here today. Okay. 
And I guess you can kind of pick up that this is very time consuming, um, but it's fun. Ooh. <laughs> Sometimes you get a big flame if you leave your uh, pen tip off the surface for a while. Um, and that's something else if you're doing a very detailed burn, um, it's good to have a piece of scrap wood next to you that you can touch your pen to before you bring it to your surface. Um, especially if it's, like I said, a very detailed burn that um, you're looking for a certain shade on it. I'll explain a little more whenever I pull out my shader tip for the design behind the letter. And you can kind of do this in a pattern if you want. Um, there are larger tips you can stipple with. Um, I'm just using the writing tip because it's my favorite one. Make sure you're working in a ventilated area. Um, <laughs> right now, like normally I would have an exhaust fan running, but I turned it off because of the noise for the video. Um, but make sure you have like a fan blowing away from you, um, a window open, just a ventilated area to work in, especially if you're going to be doing this, um, you know, pretty consistently. And I know that Bear Woods has some new products, um, so you can go check that out. They have some masks. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna take a break from stippling and change my tip and show you guys a little bit of shading and then we'll come back to this because it's kind of getting a little monotonous. Okay, so whenever you go to change your tip, you wanna turn your machine off. Just wait like 20 seconds or so. And then this is how you remove them. So this is the clamp that you use to remove the tip. So you'll just go clamp it and it comes off. And then this is the shader tip I'm going to be using. I don't know if you can see that. And then you just click it in. There's a little groove and it clicks in. So for this one, I'm going to set the temperature at five and a half and just see what the shade is like but you can see how this is shaded super black. Um, we're gonna try to get like a medium brown tone. And certain shading tips will heat differently um, just because of the components in the pen. So you kind of mess around and learn where you should set your temperature to. All right, I'm gonna do five and a half. So whenever you start shading, you wanna start towards the dark part, like, this on the line and pull it in quickly and lift your pen up. Um, so as I'm doing this, I'm realizing my temperature is a little too hot. So I'm going to turn it back down to five and try it there. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. So I'm starting at the dark part and pulling in so it's like a fade. And as you're pulling in, you want to lift your pen up, like push it down, lift it up, push it down, lift it up. And that's how you get that nice shade without a harsh line of demarcation. Um, so what's cool is like with little abstract designs like this, you can kind of just darken the border more so than the inside, and then it gives it lots of dimension and it looks pretty and it's simple. So I'm going to quickly just circle like that over top and darken this a little more. And 
And you can get creative with this. This was a free template online. Um, so I'm just kind of working with it. Um, hopefully you guys can see this okay. Scoot it over this way. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep working around these designs here. And so you can really set your temperature between five and six, but the quicker you work, the lighter the burn's going to be. So like if I'm swiping super fast like this, I'm going to get like a golden shade of brown versus if I start working slower or just like going over an area, you can layer your burn. Um, so that's how you get the really cool dimension, like in portraits and, um, you know, doing wildlife or really anything that you want dimension in. You want to switch up your shades of burn as you're going. I'm just kind of circling around the outside. Spin that a little bit so you can see the bottom. Just gonna work my way around. So you'll get to certain parts of the wood uh, where, you know, you can kind of see how this is not burning as dark as the other side. So I have to adjust my temperature. And the more experienced you get, you'll just kind of know uh, whenever the pen hits, if you need to turn the temperature up or down. But I normally keep my temperature between five and six, unless I'm doing something crazy. There's different techniques you can use with these shaders. Like you can pull towards you, I suggest, um, like this in straight lines. Or you can do cir circular motions like this. Um, I'm just gonna keep going around and burning dark around the outline. Go to the line, pull in like this. You can do this with any shading tip. And if you work with the grain of the wood, um, the, bur the burn comes out smoother. Even if you do sand the wood down really like smooth like glass, it's still, the burn looks better if you kind of move with the grain of the wood. Um, if you don't, it kind of like skips over and makes dots. So after I did that, I'm just kind of making more dimension around this shape because I don't like, it's not as defined as I would like it to be. So I'm just going around and kind of blending a little bit. If anybody works with cosmetics, you might know what I'm talking about. So I think that looks pretty good. Can you see a difference in the shade on that and around? So I'm gonna start stippling again. So I'm gonna turn my machine off, wait a few seconds. Use my clamp, take this off and then put my writing tip back on. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn it back up to six.
And honestly, normally I just put music on and just go to town on this. Um, it can be fun. I've seen people do like um, stippling in circles on their projects, and I think that's a really cool effect, um, especially for backgrounds. If you're looking to darken your background, you can stipple and create shapes with your dots to kind of make it abstract. So this part of the wood is tougher for some reason. That's why I keep turning my temperature up. There we go. Thanks guys for the nice comments. <laughs> I know this is a little monotonous, but it is cool to see the smoke billow up every time you hit the pen. I've seen people do entire portraits in this stippling, and I think that's just amazing. <laughs> um, just because of how time consuming it can be. But the end result is so worth it. It looks so good when it's done. So it's worth the patience. That's one thing you will learn if you do not already have patience. <laughs> you will develop it doing wood burning, that's for sure.
so you can see it better. That's another thing too. Don't be afraid to turn your project around while you're working on it. Because you can get better control on your pen that way. Getting there, about three quarters of the way done. It's always so satisfying once you fill in your block. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys see that?
right. So, boom, got the stippling done. So now I'm gonna go back in with my writing tip and go around the background a little more. Thank you, A.V. All right, I'm switching my tip again. I've just been alternating between the writing tip and this little shading tip here. I'm sure if you can see that. I'm gonna clamp it and take it off. Slip the other one in. There's like a little groove and you just push it in. And then I'm gonna lower my temperature back to five and go through some of these designs at a lower temperature to get like a golden brown dimension to them. Once again, I'm working with the green here, just pulling the shader from the dark line to the next dark line. Make sure you're, if you're shading, you're lifting your tool up at the end of your line because otherwise it'll create a burn dot, which happens a lot. You want to try to avoid that. I kind of got some on there, but it happens.
I'm leaving some of these parts out like here and here because I'm going to make those like the lightest part. You can do a lot with shading. <laughs> shading is really what it's all about um, when you want to do detailed burns. Okay, so for the rest of these areas, I'm gonna turn my temperature down to like four and three quarters, like almost at five, and just see what shade that gives me. Okay, that's like a nice lighter shade. Um, so whenever you do turn your temperature down, you can work slower. <laughs> um, that's the thing you'll learn with burning. It's like drawing, but you have to keep speed in mind, especially if you're working at a high temperature, you have to move fast. If you work at a low temperature and you're moving fast, your burn is going to be lighter, and I don't know, maybe that's obvious, but um, it's just something to keep in mind as you're going, and once you get it down, it'll be second nature. Um, I don't even think about it as I'm going. So whenever you get a line like this, I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Right here. See how that's dark, that's light. So you can set your burner at a low temperature. Spin it this way so you can see. And then start at the darkest part and pull in. And then this will blend that line of demarcation. Once again, as you're going, you lift up at the end of your drag. This takes a lot of practice. <laughs> Even I sometimes have to really focus to get the look I'm going for. I know right here I'm not working with the green, but whenever you're shading in between two dark lines, it's always good to just start at the dark line and end at the dark line because then you don't have to worry about burn dots happening in the area that you're trying to shade lightly. wood is a little tougher down here so it's not I'm having to layer over top which is perfectly fine all right it's going to I forgot this little guy down here I'm gonna fill that in quick and then we're gonna be finished all right That's what it looks like. Hope you guys like this. I hope it was informative. Um, 
Oh, Toad just asked, do you finish the product with lacquer or something like that? Normally I use a uh, mini wax um, water-based. You can also use oil-based, really any finish you want to. But I use, let me just look at it. I use a polycrylic spray on most of my burns, um, especially if I'm adding color or another medium to it, like color pencil, paint, something like that. Um, I use a spray lacquer over top so it doesn't smear. Um, so anyways, that's it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned some stuff. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye.